it is a beautiful fall day out here. 70 degrees, leaves are changing, kids are playing, I'm wearing shorts. But the other night, we got a gift, a gift from the north, a gift of 20 degree air. Now, for those of you using the Celsius scale, that's like super warm. But for those of us using Fahrenheit, like I am, that's like 12 degrees below zero. And it took a toll on my garden. Uh, killed my tomatoes, killed my peppers, killed everything that I left out, but I didn't let Mother Nature win. I'll go show you the carnage, and then I'll tell you what we're gonna do about it. So here's the cherry tomato plant. The frost got it or the, rather the freezing temperatures got it. Unless you judge me for leaving all these cherry tomatoes on here. Note there are 400 billion cherry tomatoes on here. I ate 400 billion of them and there are 400 billion left. But I didn't want to just leave the tomatoes to die. So I took a few cuttings, I rooted them, and I'm gonna plant them in my hydroponics container in my basement. Tomato plants produce fruit after reaching a certain maturity. And by cloning it and rooting the cutting, you preserve that age. So you can get fruit off a plant more quickly than you could if you were to grow it from seed. Now to put everything together. I have chosen to use a deep water culture system for this particular project. It's a single tomato plant in a single container of water, which I think will doc, which I think will work best for the purposes that I have. I need I want to keep a kind of a small plant in my basement just to get a few tomatoes off over the winter. I don't need a giant plant like I had in the garden. So, with that in mind, here are the pieces I'm going to use. I have one three-gallon container. I have one two-inch net cup. Three gallons is about 12 liters for those of you that are not imperialists. I have one aquarium pump with two outlets because I intend to do basil a little bit later. I have an air tube. I have an air stone. My candy bar. I'm using the three-part fertilizer, Flora Bloom, Flora Micro, and flora grow to grow my tomato. And I'm doing this for multiple reasons. One, I have it. Two, it has clear instructions on the back on how to transition a plant from vegetative growth to bloom growth to um, ripening, things like that. So here are the tomato plants that I cut. I cut a piece off that had a blossom on it, which I do not intend to leave. I cut a rather regular branch off and a smaller branch which sort of looked like it might be a sucker, but I couldn't really tell which ones are suckers, so I just cut a bunch off and I stuck them all in the water to see what happened. And as you can see, they all rooted. Every single one of them grew roots. I'm not sure if it matters very much which kind of cutting you have. And there's my basil back there, which I'll plant once it grows some roots. When I get this downstairs, I'll top it off, but for now I'm just gonna leave it with this much water in it so that I can still carry it. I'll bring it up to, I'll bring it up to nearly the top of the water, top of the bucket by the time I get downstairs. You can see on the back of these bottles, they have cuttings and seedlings, general purpose mild vegetative, aggressive vegetative growth, transition to bloom, blooming and ripening. And they have different proportions of the different parts. So for this one, I have a cutting. So I'm gonna go with super light fertilizer of all three parts for the first little while. So this pump came with two air stones, which will probably do just fine. But since I don't know that, this one looks like it would be better to me because it would provide more air throughout more of the water. All right, we're just gonna put everything in here, test it out, then I'll take it back apart, take it downstairs, put it together. Looks real good. Some people will drill holes 
here, but I'm just gonna not quite close the lid all the way. That'll be just fine. All right, so here's my guy. I'm gonna pinch off these blossoms because I don't think it's necessary at this point to have blossoms, nor do I want it to expend its energy creating fruit at this point. So we're gonna take this guy, put him down like this, such that the roots will be in the water. This cup will be in the water up to about here. So that will be fine. Put the hydrogen in to hold him up. And we have a tomato plant. Crooked tomato plant. So there it is. And it's not really this crooked, the table's crooked. That's better. But my cutting that I cut off my tomato plant before the plant froze to death, rooted in tap water in my kitchen, and then transplanted into my hydroponics container. Uh, we'll check back in a month or two, see how this guy is doing. I expect him to have blossoms, maybe even little fruits by then. Um, when you clone or cut a tomato plant, you don't have to wait as long to get fruit as if I had transplanted a seedling of about the same size. It kind of preserves the age of the tomato plant. And this being an indeterminate plant, it will just keep growing. You can't really clone a determinate plant because once they have their fruit on it, they die and they don't really keep going. But a cherry tomato plant being indeterminate is an ideal candidate for cloning and transplanting. So I'm excited about this. I'll check back in a month or two and do a follow-up video. In the meantime, I'll post pictures on my Instagram account. There's a link somewhere in YouTube to that. Um, same name. And thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.